Mr. Everett doesn't really want me to talk to people about union guys. But who did you want to talk about? Mr. Edgar is Mr. Everett's brother. He looks a bit younger, he does, but a very smart fellow. Very smart fellow indeed. He's away on some union business. Not even in Revershaw, they say. Huh? Sure, mister. What is it? He's a union man through and through. Good guy. He's very calm, laid back, doesn't do much, talks to Everard sometimes. Honestly, I don't know what he does for us, but it must be important because everybody likes him. Yes, they do. I think that's what he does. He makes everyone feel a little better. Oil for the wheels. Much needed in stressful times like these. Whoa, he's really something. <laughs> he doesn't talk much to me usually, but when he does, I don't really understand most of what he's saying. Actually, I don't think he would like me running my mouth about him like that. Once he said he's a dragon to this mob fellow who came picking a fight with some union men. <laughs> I think he really believes Jean Luc was a dragon because he ran right off. Another time he almost killed another guy, but I shouldn't talk about that. That's precisely what he is Everard's dragon. Oh, Titus is a longshoreman through and through. He was born on a boat, they say. His veins are probably filled with salt water, I tell you. <laughs> nice, friendly sort, old Titus is. Ah, uh, I'd best not. I mean, I could, but I don't think Mr. Everett would like it very much. You better ask him yourself, mister. The night guard? Ooh, he's a peculiar fellow. He's the strong, silent type, you could say. We talk all the time, but I don't really know much about him. He plays patank with my old human studies teacher, Mr. Martin, down at the plaza. I think he's the only fellow who actually knows old René. They lived on the same street their entire lives. He even dated the same girl on and off for as long as I can remember. <laughs> Strange fellows. Mr. Martin was always real nice to me in school. I remember once. Mr. Martin, yes. Don't really remember much about him. I was just a boy back then. Mr. Martin, Gaston also taught history and human studies to the Clear Brothers. Uh, sure, mister. What can Leo do for you? Yes? Only banal things strike you. At the core, you're a very banal person with a very small soul. One you should be ashamed of. It's no wonder the soft one doesn't want it back. It was right to abandon you. lessened since you were last here. If anything, it seems to have grown slightly. phone hangs mutely on the wall. There isn't much more to do here.
I'm promising Ray's pupil returns. Loman, you called me at an opportune moment. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Hold on, officer. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call in two. One. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? Billy. Billy Majon, you said. Give me a moment. I'll have to check our database. Yes, hello. Are you still there? I found Billy Majon's home address. Is that all right? No phone number, unfortunately. They're too poor to have a phone line. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislaine, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's all. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87. But we don't have it yet. Good. You have a name now. Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. Marie! She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. Uh, one second. What was he wearing? Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. Anything else you need from me? One moment. Can you please describe the body? Age, sex, cause of death? We suspect he might have been inebriated when he fell. There were bottles all around him and traces of vomit on his shirt. Any signs of violence? No field autopsy necessary. You can hear her quickly typing in the background. What about his belongings? Did you examine his clothes? 
Any information on the library card? Good. You have a lead. Do you and Luton Kitsuragi want to take the case, or should I assign it to someone else? I have assigned the case to Lieutenant Kim Kitsuragi. Please follow up on this library lead to identify the man. We'll send someone to take the body to the morgue. That's all for now. Thank you for reporting in. Is there anything else I can do for you? Not yet. But I was able to convince the database people to share private sector information. They promised to get back to me by tomorrow morning. Do you have any other questions? 57th, over and out. In the cabin, you see a set of steering levers, a radio on a hook. Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? weathered brown door. The number reads 20. Something smells good, soup along yo. The lieutenant motions to you to go ahead and knock. This is the door. You already know it's the right door. This is going to be so hard. You're right. Let's do this true. You hear light footsteps passing by the door and some folk music playing on the radio. We have our first preliminary identification. In all likelihood, the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejean. We need to confirm this as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now, Delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There's a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this. I'll be monitoring reactions, ready to act if necessary. Dad, just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Yes, it's hard. But there is no easy way to handle this information. It just has to happen, as soon as possible. The lieutenant motions towards the door. And someone turns down the radio. Tidying up, nervously.
it's you from the book stand. Did you come to bring my cockatoo back? I don't think I introduced myself properly. I'm Billy. Would you like something to drink? Tea? Lemonade? We're out of coffee. The lieutenant has taken off his foggy glasses and is busy cleaning them in his handkerchief for now. You're on your own here. Is this about Victor, my husband? Is he in some kind of trouble again? I can come pick him up in the station if that's what. No, this is something much worse. Is he in a hospital? How bad is it? Definitely no small talk. This isn't the time or place. How have I been? You're not here to discuss me. What is this about, officer? Can't write a scene without knowing the actors. Ask more. Get comfortable around her. It's me, Victor, and the kids here. We have two daughters, Jenny and Jolie. Jolie is 16 and Jenny is turning 18 next month. The girls are staying at their friend's place tonight, and Victor is out. He has a problem with drinking, and so he disappears every now and then. He's probably in the box drinking with his friends. I sent him to the library a few days ago, but I guess something came up. No, I guess I'll find out when he decides to come back home. It shouldn't be long from now. He's never gone for more than a few days. Oh, it's in Jamrock. The one at Mayro Street. I don't know the official name. Central Jamrock Public Library? I think, yes, if that's the one on Miro. It is. Just to return a book of mine? Why? Why all those questions, detective? Did he... Yes. His old leather jacket. Um, it's just your average brown leather jacket, but he bought it as a teenager, so... No, well, the lining is hand-sewn, it's blue. I tried to make the thing more weatherproof since he's running around with it in the middle of winter. She folds her hands across her chest. Here it comes. I don't want to. I don't want to do this. Force yourself. Slap yourself. Do what? Officer. Too late. You ruined it. Just say it now. Excuse me? What? What did you say? She's in pain. She's in so much pain. And so are you. Your chest is burning. We are very sorry to inform you, but your husband, Victor Mejean, was found dead this morning on the Martinez boardwalk. Oh. Oh. But he was just... I understand that this comes as a huge shock. I want you to know that me and my partner are here for you if you have any questions. We are very sorry for your loss, ma'am. What happened to him? Tell me. And you just... 
found him there? Lying in the cold. How long had he been there? She doesn't reply. Her eyes well up with tears as she struggles to keep it together. You hear the clock ticking in the children's room. Is there anyone we could call for you? A friend, a family member, someone who could be here for you? No, no. I just need to tell my girls. It burns like acid. God, should I call them? Should I tell them to come home? All right. I'll call them. She can't take much more. Her stomach is churning. Soon, she will have to go to the bathroom and scream. Just tell me, what do I need to do next? Where is he? Can I see him? And who should I contact? He was taken to the city morgue. The local coroner will be contacting you shortly to arrange the funeral. Here's his number, in case you want to contact him earlier. Is there anything else that the RCM could do for you? No, I'll call you if something comes up. I'm still a bit... ...a brain condition. Yes, you're a total fucking horror show. Yes, that's what happened to Victor, too. Apologies. Uh, my partner did not mean to make light of the situation. Again, if there's anything we could do for you, then don't hesitate to call the RCM, ma'am. She... Just nods, distant and inconsolable. The bed springs rattle beneath her as she begins to shake. These are her last reserves of strength. Her muscles will give in soon to a scream. I'll take it from here. Thank you. We should step outside and talk. 